Hello, it's Mr. Prentice here, and today I wanted to talk uh, quickly about some uh, geometry notation that we use in high school, and we'll obviously use this for our topics going forward of angles and Pythagoras and looking at lengths into measurements when we use uh, geometry diagrams. Uh, so firstly, most of the time what we'll do is we will see some kind of interval that goes from one point to another, so that might just be um, say measuring the distance of a wall if you have the another diagram or whatever it's going to be but it goes just from one point to another and for this what we recognize is we would put um, a point this point oh that's not the point I don't know what it just did but that point we would label uh, just there as say a, a capital a and we could label this one as a capital B okay so we normally use capital letters to describe a point or a coordinate or whatever you're going to call it but we, we normally just call it that point A and that's point B okay and we would call this interval AB so this one here is what we'd say interval AB now if it didn't stop just from A to B, but it continued indefinitely, so for example, it went, if I draw another one, like this, and we've used these arrows, this is saying that the line would continue and keep going that way and keep going that way indefinitely, so forever. Okay, so what we can do if that's the case and that line continued forever is instead of saying interval AB or line segment AB, you could call it as well, we would say this um, this is not a segment, this is the whole line. And it wouldn't matter what we use, we could have points, just say we have you know, points here M or N or O, it doesn't really matter what points you use, but you would say that this is line MN or line MO or, or line NO, for example. It wouldn't matter what you use because it would still describe the same thing. So what we do is we would call this, we would just call this line. That's a line, and we call that, let's say, line MN or line MO. All of those seem the same, okay? So that's what the difference is from an interval, where it starts and it stops, and a line, where it would keep going indefinitely. If we have our starting point, and then it goes indefinitely, then we would call that a ray. So for example, um, we often see an angle that is formed by a ray, like that, that's that's now called a, a ray, and our angle is formed when we've got, say, two rays. Okay, so this is, just say this is um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay, we would call this one ray H, G, and this one is ray H, I. Okay, it's starting off at H and then it goes through G and it would continue going. Okay, so when we're talking about that, that there, which is a ray, that's ray HG, we say the ray of what we started and then it goes through that, the second letter, and it would just keep going forever. Okay, this one is ray HI. There. Okay, so that's just some different things about the difference between an interval or a segment, a line, and a ray. Or in this case, this picture had two rays. Um, the reason why I did this now is I just want to recognize that when two rays intersect with each other, these, these two rays are intersecting at point H, we are producing an angle. Okay, and we can see there's an angle that's being formed here, or there's also the um, reflex angle as well. But we've got our angle that is formed, and what we would use is now 
we wouldn't want to recognize is there are two notations for angles. So this was the first one. This was common geometry notation of those ones. There are two notations of angles. And it's really important that we understand this. The first thing is that if we have our basic angle, in this case here h, um, we can use our basic notation, just one letter can be used if we know exactly what angle it's talking about. So in this case here, there's no confusion. If I say angle h, it's talking about that one. I mean, you could say oh, it's confused with the reflex angle. However, um, it's always assumed it's going to be the acute angle unless, unless it specifies reflex angle h. Okay, so there are two common notation um, for angles, notations for angles. So the first like, way is, ba the basic way, um, we can use one letter if no confusion is there. Okay, so in this case here, I could say that as above, this is just angle H. So I would say this one here is just angle H. And that's how I would write it. I would say it's angle H. Okay, some other textbooks can use like, for example, angle H and put like an angle above that. Um, that's an older style. Uh, it hasn't been used as much. You could write angle H as well, but the symbol that's generally used um, is this symbol now. Um, uh, the first one, the one I just erased, has been superseded. Okay, um, but what we need to look at is when it is complex, okay, we need to use three letters. So let's have a look, and this is one of the first main points I wanted to talk about in this video. But just say I have a diagram and it's maybe like this, and so I've got a diagram that's being produced, and okay, so maybe this is our just say that's our diagram there. Okay, so we've got our diagram and I want to describe some calculations in this. So I'll label them A, B, C, D, E. Okay, now if I told you angle B, we wouldn't know what that is. Here's, angle, here's B. If I said angle B, it is confusing. Because what one am I talking about? There's this one here, or there's that one there, or there's the combination of both. So what we need to do is we need to recognize that if I want to talk about, say, this angle just there, this one, I'll color it in so you can see. Okay, if I want to talk about that angle, then what I would say is that is the angle that is formed that's go by going from A to B to D. Okay, so I have to label this angle. That is, that is angle A to B to D. I use three letters. We need to use three letters. Okay, and it's the angle that's formed that's going from A to B to D, so that letter in the middle is the one where the angle is at. Okay, so that is angle ABD. If I wanted to talk about, say, the bottom part, so maybe I wanted to talk about, say, this angle here, okay, that one there is formed, I could write it in two ways, it's either formed by going from D to B to C, however, Normally, because C comes in alphabetic order before D, I would normally write that as angle C, B, D. So it comes from C 
to B to D. Okay, so this one here is that angle is C B D. So as you can see, we need we can you now use three letters to describe what um, it's talking about. Okay, so if I add another one and just say, okay, what is angle um, angle A B C? So in this diagram, which is angle A B C? Well, I can see it's formed going from A to B to C. So the whole angle, this is that there is is the angle that's formed going from A to B to C. The whole thing, the, com the combination of the two. Okay, and we can go through. I could tell you what is angle, say, A C E, which is A to C to E. Or I could tell you A C B, which is this angle here on the left of it, and so forth. So that is our complex, well, it's not complex, but it's the, the way we normally would describe angles in high school um, maths. Um, using that hat symbol, um, instead of writing angle ABC, um, in some places they still write ABC and they put a angle um, where the B is above the B. Okay, so why am I talking about this? Um, in Pythagoras' theorem, or in triangles, which is what I wanted to um, bring up, is let's have a look and see what we're going to need. So I don't seem to have a basic right angle triangle here to say. So just say I've got this right angle triangle just there. Okay, and that right angle triangle is M N O. What I want you to recognize is that we could describe this angle just here. Okay, that angle. We could describe this as angle um, N M O. Okay, so that's the angle that's formed going from N to M to O. So I might talk about it that way, or I might say that is the same as writing just angle M because it is not complex at all. Okay, this is angle M. In the same way, this one here is M N O or angle N. This one here is angle O or it's angle um, M O N. Okay, so I can talk about the three um, angles in that triangle. Also, I just wanted to bring up that this here, that line that goes from N to O, we could say it's interval N O. So it's the interval that's formed that goes from N to O. Okay, this one here is the interval that's formed going from M to O. And this one here is the interval that's from M to N. However, in triangles, we can also say that this here, that this line, this interval, sorry, is the lower case of the angle that's opposite it. Okay, so if this was capital M, see how this is capital M? Uh, my mouse hasn't been on the screen the whole time. Oh, no. Um, this is capital M. So that means the one that's opposite that, this one here, we could say is, I'll just write or, it could be lowercase m. Okay, this is lowercase m. In the same way, this is capital N there. So that makes this one is going to be lowercase n, is that side. And if this is capital O, then this one here is lowercase o. Okay, so just bringing this up in triangles, I'll just go through another one. I just one that doesn't even matter if it's not right angled. However, it wasn't in the right spot. Just to say I have this triangle and it's um, G, F, B, who cares um, what they are. Okay, we know that this is angle G or angle B, G, F. 
Okay, this is angle F or angle B F G. That's that one. This one is angle B or angle F B G. Okay, so that's they are the three angles and the the three intervals. Um, we can just write this is um, F G or it could be labeled as lowercase b. Okay, this one here would be bf. Okay, it's the interval going from b to f. Okay, or it's lowercase g. And this one here is bg, or it's lowercase f. Okay, so we can see that there is two ways of identifying angles in a triangle, and there is two ways of identifying the intervals in a triangle. I just wanted a short uh, video on this so that we can recognize as we move forward with triangles what the notation will be using.